Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, we are back. Once again, Zach here at Friday Night Flies uh, at Bass Pro in Tawasin. Um, so this time, this is one I kind of teased to you guys on Monday on our Facebook page. It is called the Hamels Killer. Now this is a pattern out of New Zealand. Um, imitates little bait fish over there. Uh, can definitely work as bait fish in our area as well, as well as dragonfly nymphs. It's kind of tricky. Uh, the first couple times you flaunt and tie it, but as you get going, it gets a little bit easier, especially, it's mostly because of the wings. Um, if you're like me, and you know a lot of guys that duck hunt, you're going to have a lot of mallards sitting around. So if you can dye it olive, this is the pattern for you to use up all that stuff. So let's uh, head on down and check this one out. So that is it, the Hamels Killer. Uh, so like I said, pattern out of New Zealand. I was given one of these from a good family friend who fishes this pattern in the interior. He swears by it. Says if he could fish only one pattern for the rest of his days, it would be this one. Uh, it's kind of a take on the Miss Simpson pattern. So any of you guys from New Zealand, you're probably familiar with that one. This one's just got uh, olive coloring to it. A little bit of a different tail to it. Both are very similar patterns. Again, both imitate bait fish and stuff like that. If you tie them incorrectly from what I've been reading, it will actually wobble. Um, instead of riding true, which I couldn't see as being a bad thing because it imitated an injured bait fish and stuff like that then. So it's a pretty cool pattern, quite versatile, imitates a lot of different things. So let's pop this guy out of the vise and let's get going. So again, I've got a Tiemco TMC 5262, size 10 this time. Again, any kind of 2x long nymph hook, definitely do the trick for you. You can even use a streamer hook for this if you like. You can tie these up to a six as well. Vary the colors. All this seems to be the go-to from what I've been reading and stuff like that. So again, 8-0, uni, black thread. So I got lucky on the last fly, I didn't break my thread. Maybe this time will be the time. Who knows? So let's just get that going. This fly is gonna be weighted as well, so we're gonna add some lead wire to it. We'll do that once we get the tail locked in here. So I've got some Superfly Foxtail in black. Let's get that out of the package there. And we want a little sparse clump. You don't need much. Not a whole lot. Something like so. A little bit thicker than the, uh, the wire on the hook. Cut that away. Clean up the bottoms here. Line the tips if you like. That's actually pretty good. So we're going to go a little bit longer than the length of the hook shank. About a shank and a half. Get a couple turns in there. Make sure that's seated right on top, which it is. All right. So we're on top of the tail. And you can use uh, normal pheasant tippets. I've got some dyed orange stuff here from Hairline. Comes in a nice little pack. Again, if you grab one of the bigger feathers, you can probably get about three flies out of that. So I'm just going to clean off one side here, strip that away. And there you go. So just kind of align them just like the last fly. Trim them away from the stem. We're going to get that tied in on top of the shank. This time, about the length of the hook. So we want the fox to extend past the tail. And there we go, lock that down. And we'll just trim that away up to the hook guy, kind of on a taper. We'll take that thread up to the front. So we just had one of our viewers, Bob, in here. He's tying up some chronomids and stuff like that. You should uh, post them on our Facebook page, Bob. I'd love to see them, see what you're coming up with. You're showing me some of his UV stuff. We were talking. You don't always need to have UV. Like right now, I'm on a big uh, natural material kick. UV is good when the fish aren't biting. Natural stuff's good the rest of the time. You never know. Always take a good assortment of everything. Just make sure that's seated where I want. Perfect. Now if I were tying production style, like I was the other day on these, I would have whip finished there, 
then added my thread, and then some head cement. So, I am not doing production style, just to save you guys the, the tortures of watching me tie up a million of these. So I've got some .015 lead wire here, and I'm just going to start a little bit of a gap but for the tail there. Just wrap this all the way up. You can go as heavy or as light as you like. And this I'm wrapping all the way forward. Down to a little bit past, right before the eye of the hook there. Just wiggle and break that off. Both ends, that one doesn't, there we go. Alright, then I'll just take my thread. Big open spiral turns here. Build up a little bit of a taper in the front. And we'll go back. Don't need to go too crazy here. And again, build up a little bit of a taper on the back here. So it's not an abrupt bump. Back forward, go back. Squish that lead back down. Alright, just to secure it, a little bit of head cement. So this water-based loon stuff will definitely seep right in to all the wraps and hold that in place. That's not going anywhere. Alright, so once again, I got this Danville four strand floss. Grab myself a couple inches here. This time I'm going to use all four strands just to help build up the body. So we're just going to catch that in. Pull that to about the halfway point. Thread wraps all the way up. Alright, we're gonna wrap this up. Oop. Smashing the camera there. Hopefully, there wasn't too bad earthquakes. Mine's on a tripod, unlike the guys up in Pemby there. So, mine's not going anywhere. Alright, so we'll tie that off, halfway point. I did try, when I first started tying this, just leaving the floss there. It was a huge pain to deal with. So I recommend tying it off there. It doesn't have to be too pretty. Now I've got some olive mallard. And this is where you can use up some of the shorter, smaller fibers. So I'm going to grab this and clean off the ends here. And I'm going to measure these. So the length that I want the feather to be, just double check there. I want the tips to re reach that first part of the barring there. So I'm going to pull this up and shorten it up a little bit. So I'm going to do that with two feathers here. So I got one done, and a second one coming up, if it stops twisting on me. go that looks about right so if you guys missed it I did tease this photo or this this fly on our Facebook page definitely give us a follow see what we got we got a lot of photos and uh, videos and stuff on there as well as we talk about what's going on when we get stuff in and things like that so definitely check us out so just three four wraps just nice loose ones and what we're gonna do so we're just going to pull on that stem and we're going to shorten that up. And what this does is it kind of curbs the feather into the body. So I'll just tuck that a little bit more. There we go. I'll do that on my side as well. Just kind of even those up. This creates a nice rounded body for the fly. So if I rotate that, you can see a little bit on the, the red on the bottom there. And on top, it gives a really cool look to the fly. So I'm just going to take that up a little bit. Cinch them down, trim away the stems, and we're going to take our floss once again. Just so kind of even up the tips there. Really looking forward to fishing this pattern. Once we get some warmer weather, like I said in the last video, we got probably another snowstorm coming which is outrageous for us out here in Vancouver. 
you know, up north in Pemberton where Brad and Scott are. They're kind of used to that stuff. For us, it's a little ridiculous down here. Usually, I'm lake fishing by this time. So we're going to wrap up that floss again. Don't worry if there's a little gap there. The fish aren't going to mine too much. Just kind of wrap that forward. Don't really need to build a taper. It's more of just an underbody. All right. Capture that in there. Tie that off. So like I said, this fly definitely works quite well in New Zealand, I know. Um, I've heard from multiple people. It's really starting to catch on over here as well. I've had actually a couple people just in the last week or two uh, come in asking for it and if I knew about it. Yes, I do. So, you now these guys, again, more mallard, so two more pieces. These ones I like to strip enough fibers so it's about the length as the previous set. So I'm a little bit long there. When I pull this guy forward, it's going to come up about halfway or so on the, the last feather. So again, still a little heavy. Okay, these are easier to tie in production mode because you can get all the feathers prepped and ready to go. That looks about right. Let's get the other one going. And you can just knock off one after the other. They go together pretty quick. So, almost ready there. do the trick. All right, so tie one in on my side. Just a couple loose wraps. Three or four. That's all you need. And then the one on your guys' side. This is where having a rotary vise really comes in handy. It allows you to see what's going on on both sides of the fly. So I'm going to try and pull that there so you guys can see it. Just double check how that's sitting. It's going pretty good. And a little bit more there. There we go. So now those feather tips are kind of overlapping. They're not all the way, but they got a little bit of over overlap. I'll just do my side. All right. So those loose wraps really help to secure that feather in once you start pulling it forward. So I'm going to trim away the waste here. Both sides. And we're going to build up a nice black head here. You don't have to crank down too hard on this stuff. I've actually had some of the feathers break on me from this point. So just take your time. As Davy McPhail would say, just build up a nice little head. Right, just cover up that little bit of green there. We're almost there. Cool. And we're going to whip finish. Definitely take your wraps down towards the eye of the hook just to tidy things up, smooth everything out. There we go. Now, just a little bit of head cement. You can use varnish as well. The Superfly, um, super lack and black definitely works quite well. All right. So that's that loon stuff. Like I said, you can probably see it there. It goes on white. As it dries, it will go black. So that's the underside of the fly there. And that's that. So let's head on out and uh, head back up and sign out. All right. So there you have it. The Hamels Killer. Um, Pretty sweet little pattern. Again, I'm really excited to fish this one this, uh, this spring, whenever it shows up and the ice comes off. Uh, so definitely tie some up, give us a go, and uh, let us know what you think. Again, join us on our Facebook page. We got a lot of behind the scenes and sneak previews and things like that, and definitely share with us what you guys would like to see on the show. Um, definitely want to bring more stuff that you guys would want, so please hit us up with all your questions and inquiries, and we'll definitely do our best to accommodate. All right, we'll see you guys next week. I'm sure there's another show going on probably at some point. Um, definitely check them on out. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next week.